Good evening, everyone. I welcome all the senior members and friends for this month's uh, uh, meeting of Indian Society of Gastroenterology Tamil Nadu chapter. I request Dr. Um, our President, Dr. Bankara Krishnan, to give the welcome address. Good evening. So we have just assembled here for our uh, regular monthly meeting of the Tamil Nadu ISG. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome you all for this uh, program. The program is composed of initially the first three case presentations and followed by lectures on IBD and a panel discussion. Uh, without wasting, uh, recently uh, in Calcutta we had the state chapter president's uh, 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 meeting with the national president, probably the first time the national president has met all the state chapters and they were very appreciative of two state chapters, one was Tamil Nadu and the other was Kerala. Uh, they were very, very appreciative and they really appreciated the fact that we brought up the journal as well as we do a uh, multicentric studies. So without wasting time, we'll start the program and I welcome you, I take this opportunity to welcome you all again. Thank you. For the PG session, I request the chairperson, Dr. Preeti, Dr. Satyamuthi to come to the podium and carry on the proceedings. Good evening, a very warm welcome to all of you. Let's start off with the PG session without any delay. Uh, we have three case presentations. Uh, the first one is an interesting case of intractable seizures, Dr. Surbhi Satish Kumar from uh, Ramchandra. Can we call Dr. Surbhi onto stage, please? Can I start, ma'am? Uh, ma'am, can I start? <laughs> A very good evening to one and all. I am Dr. Surbhi Desai, second year MC at Surgical Gastro from Sri Ramachandra Medical College. I have an interesting case to present, a case of intractable seizures. Uh, so it's a case about a 55-year-old gentleman with no comorbidities. Uh, he presented uh, the first episode of seizures six months back and uh, he consulted a neurologist at a nearby hospital. Uh, seizure had no other constitutional symptoms. Uh, CT brain and EEG were normal. So the neurologist started him on uh, benzodiazepine, that is clobazam, and uh, followed up. The patient again went to the same neurologist with the second episode of seizures two months later. That was associated with loss of consciousness and giddiness. And the same neurologist was consulted and uh, he, the patient was managed medically again. Now he developed the third episode of seizures, which was further two months later. That was associated with giddiness and prolonged loss of consciousness. So this time the patient went to another nearby hospital. And that time the RBS showed 30 milligrams per deciliter and uh, he was started on 25% dextrose. And he was referred to our institute. The patient was admitted under endocrinology department of our institute. And on general examination, the positive findings were acanthosis nigricans and multiple lipomatosis. So they started doing serial second-hour blood sugar monitoring. 
So you can see the blood sugar values that started at 8 a.m. Uh, the blood sugar would be fall, uh, it would be given 25% dextrose, the sugar levels will become normal, again it would fall and the same would happen. Similarly, it went on uh, so for the second day. Uh, along with that, all the investigations were done, CBC, RFT, LFT, uh, uh, everything was normal, except the special investigations like uh, serum calcium, serum parathormon were elevated, insulin and uh, C-peptide were elevated, serum cortisol was normal, and random blood sugar was uh, very low, that you can see uh, 36 milligrams per deciliter. So here the Whipple's triad was uh, evident. So our provisional diagnosis based on the biochemical parameters was insulinoma. So we further evaluated using CCT abdomen. The CCT abdomen showed a uh, well-defined uh, mass, which is exophytic, in the body of the pancreas, which is about three centimeter, which showed enhancement in the arterial phase. So uh, we proceeded further with the 68 gallium uh, Dotanoc PET scan, which picked up another mass, uh, which was a small mass, just distal to the previous mass, which is three by three centimeter, and this another was 0 0.6 by 0 0.5. So the final report of Dotanoc scan was, uh, there were two uh, lesions that were identified, one in the body of the pancreas, three by three centimeter, which was uh, taking the uptake, and uh, another 0 0.6 by 0 0.5. There was an adrenal adenoma also identified on the left adrenal gland and another uh, parathyroid adenoma on the left, uh, below the left lobe of uh, thyroid gland, but they did not show any uptake. So based on that uh, gallium scan, the diagnosis went ahead like MEN1 syndrome with a functioning NET, that was insulinoma. So after that, the endocrine department brought us into picture. The surgical gastro department was consulted. Since the hypoglycemic episodes were alarming and life-threatening, upfront surgery for pancreatic lesion was planned, and the parathyroid and the adrenal adenoma had to be addressed later. So we decided to plan a surgery that was spleen-preserving pancreatic resection. However, the intra findings showed that the pancreatic tumor was large, about three centimeter, and another lesion was intrapancreatic, and the splenic vein was buried within the pancreatic parenchyma. So uh, we could not save the spleen and hence we went ahead with uh, distal pancreaticosplenectomy. This is the final specimen photo, the pancreas with the spleen and this is the lesion uh, that we can see, that, that the one lesion that was prominent, the other was not prominent. Uh, the closer picture that is the re typical reddish brown color of the insulinoma can be appreciated. So this is the cut section specimen that we got the photo from the patho department that showed one lesion over here and the other we can see it over here. So on the left side you can see the Dotanox scan showing two lesions and on the right side you can see the cut section specimen showing both the lesions in the uh, specimen. This was the stained specimen photo. So post-operatively now the hypoglycemia got converted to hyperglycemia and uh, which was managed with insulin uh, regularly by the endocrine department. Post-op period no further episodes of seizures or loss of consciousness happened and the elevated diabetes and PTH was managed by the endocrine department. Uh, on POD4 uh, the patient had, we sent the drain fluid amylase which showed elevated levels of amylase and uh, uh, but the output was low so there was a low output pancreatic fistula which was expected after distal pancreatectomy. We discharged the patient with drain tube on 11th POD and the drain was removed uh, on follow up after two weeks. And again the further uh, adenoma evaluation and screening of the family and relatives was uh, advised by the endocrine department. So the final histopathology report showed the two lesions as mentioned were three by three centimeter in the body and 0 0.6 by 0 0.5 in the distal body of the pancreas. And uh, the mitotic rate was low, less uh, one by 10, and KI67 index was also less than 3% with no perineural invasion or lymphovascular invasion. So the final diagnosis according to the patho report was multifocal functional pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, grade one insulinoma. So this was the histopathology staining, showed a well-encapsulated, well-differentiated endocrine tumor. And uh, the salt and pepper chromatin appearance of the well-differentiated with the hyaluronic stroma. And uh, immunohistochemistry showed synaptophysin staining. 
So moving on to the discussion part, uh, insulinoma is the most fu common functional